Okay, so we've talked about how to uh, quantify random uncertainty uh, for single data points uh, using standard deviation and standard deviation of the mean and t-scores and z-scores and all that cool stuff. Uh, now we're going to talk, <laughs> talk about linear fits uh, and curve fitting and how to find an uncertainty in a fitted curve. All right, so here's a calibration curve for a temperature input that's giving us a voltage output. Uh, if we wanted to, you know, as you've probably done uh, many times, you create a curve, a linear fit out of that, right? And you use, um, you know, some kind of spreadsheet program and it draws a nice line that, uh, that goes through uh, those data points. Um, we, uh, for instance, if this, one of the things you do with this is to the uncertainty in your curve fit. In other words, how far you are away from your data points are from that line is going to tell you something about your systematic uncertainty. Um, but we want to know what that uncertainty is. We need to know uh, how good is that data? How closely does it match uh, that fitted curve? So let's start from the beginning. When we find a fitted curve like that, we're doing something called regression. Um, uh, and the aim of this is to find a functional relationship between um, an independent variable, which is our x-axis, and a dependent variable. And when we say a functional relationship here, we're speaking of that using math language. What function represents the relationship between those two things. That temperature calibration curve we just looked at, that we can sort of make the assumption, oh, a, a line is the function that represents that. Let's find what line uh, represents that curve with a slope and a y-intercept and so forth. Um, but potentially, uh, that function could be anything. It could be a polynomial function, right? Uh, with some x squared or x to the m, no matter what, what order polynomial. It could be an exponential function. It could be a power law function. Uh, there are all sorts of functional uh, functions that we could use to describe a relationship. The one that we looked at in the previous slide with our temperature calibration was a linear fit, which is a uh, first order polynomial. Okay, and that's going to, well, that's pretty common. So how do we do that? Well, uh, in practice, to find that fit, uh, we're going to use what's called a least squares algorithm. And what that means is we're going to take this deviation here uh, and we're going to square it. Uh, and we're going to try and find the curve, this dotted line here, uh, that gives me the smallest sum of the squares. That's what the least squares are. Um, uh, so basically gives us the smallest deviation. Uh, and that deviation is the same deviation that we talked about uh, with standard deviation, except that we're not comparing each data point to the same number, to x bar. Instead, we're comparing each data point, all these blue dots here, uh, to the curve that's going through those data points. Now, we can look at the kind of math of how this works. So we're going to sum the squares of this deviation, uh, and we're going to try and minimize that. So all that, that's all this is. So notice how uh, similar that looks to standard deviation, and we'll see it, that even more in a second here. Here's our deviation the difference between the data point and my curve, I square it and sum them all up. Okay, so for a linear fit, that deviates, that sum of deviations is gonna look like this here, right? Where this is just a linear equation with a couple of parameters. Um, and to find those parameters, my slope and my y-intercept, um, we do a minimization of this. We throw in some calculus. Let's all, we're not going to do that because it's not that much fun. <laughs> yeah, I'll put these monsters uh, down here. 
uh, which actually aren't that scary. They're just adding and multiplying, and uh, it's the math is pretty uh, pretty straightforward actually. Uh, but it's not that much fun. So we'll use computers to do that a lot. But that's going to define for us a, um, uh, a intercept, and it's going to define a slope for us. And thank God we don't have to do it ourselves. <laughs> All right, so that's going to give us our curve. So now we have, and we can do that with different kinds of functions as well. Um, then we want to evaluate the uncertainty in that fit. And so uh, at that point, uh, trying those deviations are going to serve a different purpose for us to figure out how good the fit is. And the standard error of the fit uh, looks a lot like our standard deviation, right? Almost the same thing. Here's the deviation between our data point and our curve for each data point. We square that to make it positive. We sum it all up. We divide it by the number of things that we summed up and we take the square root. So this is basically a curve form of standard deviation. Now here, uh, we talked a little bit about degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom is gonna be uh, n minus m plus one where m is the polynomial order of the fit, linear fit is or of order one, and so nu would be n minus two. So it's a slight different in our, difference in our calculation of nu. All right, now um, we, when we turn that standard error of the fit into an uncertainty, uh, we're going to use t-values again, right? So having more data points to deal with is going to give us a smaller t and a smaller uncertainty. Uh, this looks just like uh, standard deviation of the mean, right? So very similar to what we were doing uh, with single data points. There are more complicated ways to do that um, that give a more complex bound to our uncertainty, because really the points out here we're going to be, or uh, the line out here we're going to be less certain about than we are uh, in here, because basically because we don't know the points on the other side of that. Uh, so there are some more complications than that, but for the most part, uh, this will do the trick for us. Sometimes we want to find the, the intercept uh, or slope error. Uh, and we have these equations here that can do this, and we'll use these on occasion. Uh, and so just know that these are here, um, so that if you need to find that uncertainty in a slope, uh, we know how to do that. Okay, so that gives us, for a lot of what we're going to do, standard error of the fit is going to be the term that we're going to use. But it's, you'll also run into what's called the coefficient of determination, or R squared. And when you use a spreadsheet, this is the thing that, they, uh, that the spreadsheet wants to give you. Uh, and this is another way of sort of quantifying how well uh, that curve fits the data points. Uh, that you've given it. Like, is this, a, is this actually a linear fit? Does it fit well with that? Um, it expresses this equation here, which is how much of the deviation, uh, that is how much of the range of values uh, in this direction, um, how, uh, how big are the deviation compared to that range, okay? So in other words, all of these data points all together range quite a bit in this direction. And so we're comparing this whole range uh, to the little deviations between data points and the line. And so it looks like this, where this is our sum of deviations uh, between the curve and data points, and this is the sum of deviations between the data points and the mean y value. Okay, so it's uh, in some ways like a percentage error value. It's telling us um, how far are our points uh, from the curve compared to how far they uh, range in general on that. If we have a r squared of one, uh, then they're going to match perfectly. 
because this value up here is going to be zero. Okay, and so a one means that it is it matches that uh, very well. We can see uh, more often that you're going to run into numbers like 0.9 and 0.8 and 0.7. Um, if r squared is equal to 1, um, then that means that the dependent variable depends only on x, right? In other words, if we um, had an independent variable that was, was the height in inches and uh, x was the height in centimeters, we'd know that that's going to be a perfect linear fit. As uh, x got bigger, y is going to get bigger at whatever that conversion rate is. Um, if it's less than 1 but above 0.5 or 0.6, there's probably some correlation there. It's not going to tell you anything about causation, um, and it's not a perfect dependence. Something else is happening. Um, so if you, you know, compared white weight and height of a population, you would certainly see some correlation, right? But it wouldn't be a perfect correlation. And so you'd have an R-square value that was less than 1 but bigger than 0. All right, and that is uh, our little thing about uncertainty in fits.